Alright guys, so here we have a real life example dealing with simplifying complex fractions. Okay, so this builds off everything we have been learning. So let's go ahead and read the word problem and then we'll talk about how we're going to set it up. Okay, it says a train averages a speed of 20 miles per hour to its destination with cars and 30 miles per hour back without cars. They want to know what the average speed of the entire trip was. So they want to know the average speed of the train throughout the entire trip. Okay, so what we have to do is start um, defining some of our knowns. And this can be the hardest part about kind of picking apart word problems is trying to figure out where to begin. So let's determine, okay, the total distance here. What is going to be the total distance? So we don't know the distance, okay? But we know it went to its destination and back, right? We know it went to its destination and back. So if we just call the distance d, we can say that the total distance is going to be 2 times d, right? There and back. That'll be 2 times d. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out so we can go ahead and define that. So we can say here total distance is going to equal to times d, right? That will be the total distance. Okay, and let's look at what they're asking for here. They're asking for the average speed, right? They want to know the average speed of this entire trip. Okay, so if they want to know the average speed here, what is the formula we could use for that, for the average speed? What formula could we use for the average speed? Okay, so take a minute and think about it. What could we use here? Okay, so we could say that we could call it the velocity, okay, so we can say V, or the average speed. So we could say V average is going to equal what? How do we get the speed here? Well, it's going to be distance over time, right? So we can say distance over time. Well, we have the total distance, right? It's right here, 2D. So we know that this 2D is going to be put on top for our distance. However, we don't have the time. How can we figure out what the time is going to be here? Think about this. We're given the following information. It says it goes 20 miles per hour, right, going there, and then 30 miles per hour on its way back. Okay, so we have miles per hour. How do we get that so it just says hours, right? Because we want time here. We want a little total time. Okay, so how do we get that? Well, think about it. D here is going to represent a distance, right, or miles, right? So for example, if I did the following, if I had D over 20 miles per hour, I'm just gonna put 20, right? And we know that this is miles per hour, okay? If D is also miles, okay, the miles will cancel out here and we're left with hours. So for example, what you essentially have here is miles over miles per hour, okay, because that is what this 20 is, 20 miles per hour, and D, we determine it's going to be a distance, so miles, All right, well, these cancel out, and you're left with hours here, okay, so think about this, knowing that, if I do D over 20 plus D over the other known, which is 30 miles per hour, that will give me the total time, so this will equal total time. Okay, so if I do the total distance divided by the total time, that will give me the average velocity, okay, or the average speed. So let's write this out so we can get a better representation of how this will look. So you'll have the following here. You'll have two, let's say V average equals 2D, okay, all over D over 20, plus d over 30. Okay, so you have that. So we have to solve for d here. And again, this goes back to simplifying complex fractions like we did in the previous problem. Okay, and remember back in that previous problem what I told you to do. Don't get overwhelmed by this, right? We're going to break this down into parts. Let's simplify down this denominator here, right? And then we'll work on solving for D. Because, look, we have two fractions here being added. Let's simplify it and combine it into one. Okay? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to erase this. Okay, we know what we're talking about now. I'm going to go ahead and write out my work over here. 
Okay, so I'm going to work on the denominator right here. So I'm going to work on this part. I'm going to work on simplifying this guy down on the denominator. So we have d over 20, d over 20, plus d over 30. Now think about how can we combine this into one? Look, we're adding two fractions. So in order to add two fractions, we have to have the same common denominator. Well, look here. We don't have the same common denominator. So how can we do that? Right, how can we get the same common denominator here? Okay, a simple way to do this, and you can do this with all fractions, is simply just multiply the denominators on both of your fractions. Okay, and then you'll multiply the numerator okay, by whatever is missing from that particular denominator. Okay, so for example, let's go through this. I'm going to multiply the denominator to get a common denominator. So if I do 20 times 30, okay, that's going to be 600. Okay, so let's just look at this. I'll have 600 on the bottom. What did I multiply 20 by in order to get 600? Well, I multiplied by 30, right? So I'm going to do 30 times D here. So 30D. Plus, what did I multiply 30 by here in order to get 600? Well, I multiplied by 20. So I'm going to do 20 times D, which is 20d. And this is a trick you can use with all fractions, okay? If you um, just want to get a common denominator real quick, this will work for all fractions. And when we simplify this down, okay, we get the following. We get 30 plus 20, which is going to be 50, so we get 50d all over 600, okay? And we can simplify this down even fur, fur, um, further, right? We can have 50 and 600. We can reduce this. So 50 goes into itself once, okay? And 50 goes into 600 12 times. So essentially what we have now is D over 12, okay? D over 12. Now let's combine this together now. So going back, we have 2D. So I'm going to erase this work here. Now we're going to have D over 12 on the bottom. Okay, so our average is now going to be this. We have 2D over what we just simplified down, D over 12. Okay? Now we know what to do now. We have two fractions that are being divided, so we're going to keep, change to multiplication, and then flip. So we have the following, 2D times, right? We changed it to multiplication. If you want to put a little multiplication sign, that's fine. And then we flip the fraction. We have 12 over D. Well, look what happens here. The D's cancel. 2 times 12 is going to be 24. So we get 24. And again, we just did distance over time. This would be miles per hour. This is going to be the average speed, okay, of this train. All right, and that is it.